UCLA is a university with unlimited possibilities for students that desire world-class academics and research. Unmatched diversity, incredible cultural and social opportunities, successful alumni and career networking, first-class campus facilities, plus America's top intercollegiate sports teams. Located in Westwood, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean, UCLA's one square mile campus is surrounded by famous cities such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Santa Monica. Hi everybody and welcome to Westwood. I'm Dave Marcus, she's Naomi Manea. We are your hosts for another episode of UCLA Bruin Talk. Today we've got a very interesting show for you as we take a look inside what it takes to build a program like UCLA's. Before we meet our first guest, let's take a look at this week's upcoming events. A world-class institution like UCLA, things just don't happen on their own. They are planned and worked, and there's a lot of behind the scenes. And we are really going to get an in-depth look today at some of what happens behind the scenes. We're pleased to be joined by Mark Harlan, the Senior Associate Athletic Director for External Relations. Mark, in summary, to put it in sports terms, you're like the point guard <laughs> in, in, in a lot of projects at UCLA. Tell us what your role encompasses. Well, uh, thank you, Dave. I, I haven't been described as a point guard before, um, but I appreciate it. You know, the, the job that I have at UCLA is, is a great honor. Um, the, the external affairs team is, is consistent of a bunch of professionals who, on a daily uh, basis, work to, to raise the profile of UCLA athletics and all the wonderful things that go on. So that consists of our marketing team, our development team, our varsity club team, our corporate affairs team. and. And in that group, everybody has goals to make sure, again, that we're telling the greatest stories for our student athletes, mm -hmm. bringing them out to our fans, and of course, creating the best opportunity for our fans to come and see them, know about them, and of course, eventually help invest in the program. Um, it's a great place, but at UCLA, there's a bunch of great stories to tell. There's a lot going on right now, and one of the things that is at the forefront in people's minds is the renovation of Poly Pavilion. Tell us where we are on the project and what remains to be done. It is an exciting, exciting uh, project that we're working on, and, and those that have been on campus um, can certainly understand that we are underway at, uh, at Poly Pavilion. We're doing great. I mean, there's been some unbelievable folks that have come forward and, and supported the program. We have a very ambitious goal to raise $100 million. Uh, we're, we're heading toward the $70 million mark, uh, which is just a great place to be, a bunch of people that we're still out talking to. Um, the project itself, from a physical standpoint, um, is ahead of schedule, which is remarkable considering the work that's, that's undergoing uh, as we speak. Interestingly enough, when we get past the first of the year and start heading into the spring, another phase of this begins, which is the seat selection time for, for Poly Pavilion. So our fans and our supporters will, will start getting a lot of information regarding that. But you'll be able to go online, see New Poly, and actually check your seat and pick your seat right online. And also, I think for the first time, really, people will be able to see as they tour that that, that, uh, that screen, really be able to see what New Poly will bring as a fan. It's a really exciting time. So there's a lot of new re renovations in Poly, including the online seat choosing. Mm -hmm. How do you expect the fans and other people that attend the games and competitions to react? Well, I think when people come into to Poly Pavilion in 212 when we open the doors for the competitive season, I think they're going to see something completely different, but then realize as they're walking in, it looks like Poly Pavilion. 
I mean, we kept that structure. I mean, Coach Wooden and Dan Guerrero, when they had a conversation about this five years ago, it was very clear when Coach said, you know, can we, can we figure out a way to keep this structure iconic and, and still do it? And Dan said, you bet we can. And that's what I think we've done. I think the architects did a great job. Uh, and certainly PCL, the company that's constructing, has done a fabulous job so far. The big difference for fans, Naomi, will be a, just a, a huge concourse. When you walk in, concourse, you can see the history of UCLA athletics, not just basketball. You'll see gymnastics uh, history. You'll see volleyball history. Um, and you can walk around the whole tour, of course, a lot more food selections and, and a lot more room to maneuver. And then, of course, everyone will have a nice chair back, which I'm sure people will appreciate. Um, it'll be a new experience, but it'll still have that, that great poly pavilion historical feel. Speaking of new experiences, you have a background in sports administration elsewhere. You mm -hmm. grew up in Pacific Palisades, so you're really coming home. How does it feel to be associated with UCLA? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's an honor. I mean, when, when I get asked that question, I, I, that's the first word that comes to mind. This is an incredible place. I grew up here. My family has had season tickets for 40 years. Um, I went off to the University of Arizona in 1986 to earn a degree, got involved in the business there, and worked at that, that school for, for many years. I say that school now. See how quickly <laughs> you, you switch, along with all my red clothes that have been thrown out. This, this place is just special. Uh, when, you, when you're afar and you're working in the Pac-10 Conference and you see what's been accomplished at UCLA, you just, you just wonder how they do it. So when you arrive, like I did in July, and you see the people that are working here, that some of uh, people like Scott Mitchell, who's one of the top marketers in this country, um, on down the list of, of Mark Dellens and Sports Information, all the people here that have made this such a special place, um, to be able to come here and, and then to meet the coaches. I mean, someone said the other day, I mean, how is it fundraising with these coaches? I said, are you kidding me? I mean, go out with, with these coaches and talk to donors and supporters and hear them sell their program. It's an amazing thing. Um, great place. My job here, though, is to continue to make sure that we're capturing that type of excitement, that type of enthusiasm, taking it to the marketplace, and making sure people are supporting us. And so by that, whether it's a corporation who wants to get affiliated uh, with our program or a donor who wants to get involved in, in New Poly or our Wooden Athletic Fund, we are at a time in college athletics um, that we have to be self-sufficient. It's the right thing to be. Our budget is $66 million at UCLA. Uh, of that budget, about $2 million comes from student fees, which we're incredibly grateful for. The rest of it, we're responsible for raising. So it's our ticket buyers. It's our fans that, that support the program in the Wooden Athletic Fund and all those things. So it's a very, very critical component of making the whole thing work. Um, but we've got great people to, to get it done. Now, I have a pen with me. I didn't bring my checkbook, yes. so I can't write we'll that take $30 care million dollar check today. We'll take care of that. How about the fan that's out there sure. that is not a $30 million yeah. donor? Uh, what opportunities are there for them to support UCLA? Yeah. Well, that's a great question. And, and you know, when you look at any kind of um, program in a collegiate athletics today, and you look at things like the Wooden Athletic Fund, there's all kinds of levels to join. I mean, we've got, we've got room for the $100 donor, and we've got room, as you said, for the donor that uh, gives a lot more than that. Each one of those, each one of those checks that comes into this, this program is immensely helpful. And our job, whether it's the $100, the $500 on up, is to make sure that that, that that gift is honored in the way that it's, it's supposed to be, and that we thank you. You know, it's amazing um, how you can make mistakes by just not thanking people appropriately. Making sure that, that when they invest, they understand what's going on, we're communicating to them, um, and they feel a part of the program because they are part of the program, and it's really important for us to do that. As your job here at UCLA, you get to do a lot of different things and work with a lot of different people, as you've said. What's your favorite part of your job? I think the favorite, the, the, the best thing here at UCLA is, is coming in in the morning, and, and you get here early because you need to, and, and <laughs> there's student athletes, you know, you think you're starting your day at 7 a.m., there's student athletes that are just finished their workout, and, and, and they're, they're already full speed ahead. And then you walk to the second floor, I, I call it the floor of champions. Then you go through the softball offices or you go through the gymnastics. There's just trophies all over this place. I mean, it, it, there's a feeling um, in the Morgan Center where we all work that you're a champion and you need to work like a champion. Um, so that, that, that's something you get every morning. If you're not ready to go, you will be when you walk through those doors. Absolutely. It's, a great, it's a, just a fantastic place. Let's talk a little bit, not about your role here, but about you. You started mm -hmm. out as a, as a manager on the football team at Arizona. Correct. How do you build a sports career out of an experience like that? Well, I think when you get involved in the collegiate athletic business, um, as I know both of you have been, it, it, it's, there's a certain addictive quality to it. And I think once you learn 
um, what it takes to, to do that, you, you want to get more. And so as I, as I went through school as an undergraduate, I learned, I got a chance to visit with, with professionals that were working in the Arizona Athletic Department, asked them what they did, so that when I graduated, I was able to work and volunteer and, and become a graduate assistant and kind of work my way through uh, the, the athletic department there. And, and when I left there as an assistant athletic director, you know, I, I felt like I really, I did everything I could to learn what everyone's role was. Uh, when you run a football game or you run a basketball game, it takes so many people and you need to know how it's all working. Um, one of the things I do oversee is, is, of course, the marketing area, which part of that is the game enhancement piece. You know, I can have a bunch of ideas on what we need to do or things that we did at Arizona or other places, but you have to know what everyone's role is. The, the person that, that's running event management or the person over here that's taking tickets, how does all the flow? So I think it was important when I came up to Arizona to learn all that, and now I can apply some of those things now. So when we have ideas, we're going to apply them in the, in the most effective manner. I think people would be stunned to look at the game operations manual for a football game at the Rose Bowl. Mike Dowling does such a great job, yes. and it's, an, it's, it's like a phone book. There are so many roles, so many people, that, and it works so seamlessly. It just works mm -hmm. well at UCLA. That's got to be a nice jump-off point for you when you talk to donors, you talk to right. boosters about positive experiences. Right. Well, one of the greatest things that we do for a donor experience is to show them that behind the scenes um, at a football game because people are amazed. You know, people go, they park, they go to their seats, and if it all goes right, they have somewhat of a short line. <laughs> they go to their seats, we win, it's great, they go home. Well, involved in all that is, like you say, a lot of work and a lot of planning. Um, so it is fun to take a donor behind the scenes at the Rose Bowl, show them for instance, the security briefing that goes on before the game with 90 different police officers and what everyone needs to be on the lookout for, or the ticket meeting where all the different things that people may be coming into games with, or go upstairs in the skybox and see how the press prepare for the game and all that kind of work. I mean, it's, it's a very interesting behind the scenes look, um, but there, there, are, there are a lot of people that do a lot of work that, that work on that. And yes, when they do their job right, and they often do, then the experience for everybody is very good. Speaking of football, besides renovating Poly, there's also potential plans to renovate the Rose Bowl. What kind of improvements can fans be looking for? Well, thanks, Naomi. That's a big project that we're very excited about. We've been working very hard with the city of Pasadena and also with the people at the, at the Tournament of Roses and the, and the Rose Bowl Organizing Committee, and we just finished our agreements. We believe in the next few years the Rose Bowl is really going to become, again, another iconic structure, but then have new features that will really make it great for our fans. So we're talking about new concourses there, tunnel widening, um, a brand new press box, a brand new sky box for, for those folks, brand new video screen, um, be one of the biggest in college football. Um, really, again, keeping the flavor of what is the Rose Bowl, um, but being able to add some, some more modern um, aspects of it. The great thing about it is um, we were able to work with our partners so that we don't have to raise any ticket prices for our fans. We're able to pledge, you know, it, current revenues and some other things that, but we won't have to do like what we're seeing with Poly. We don't have to launch a capital campaign. As a matter of fact, right after the Rose Bowl this year, right around January 4th, construction will begin out there. And important to note, we will not have to leave the Rose Bowl during the process. We will be playing there continuously through the project. Well, it's going to be interesting next year when the Bruin basketball and volleyball and all those teams have to leave Poly Pavilion yes. for a year, but it's a, it's a minimal intrusion. Yes. It's one season, which is pretty remarkable for a project of that scope. Ab absolutely, and, and it, it'll, be a very, it'll be a challenge. Uh, I, I don't think any of us are, are going to shy away from that. Certainly, the student-athletes are going to be in different venues. For them, that will be a challenge, um, but also for our fans. We're going to work very hard, and we have been working very hard to make sure that we, we solidify our contract with the venues that we're working with for all the sports but also, importantly enough, communicating um, where we're going to be. You know, it's, it's challenging with game times, as we hear from our fans periodically. Um, but certainly when we get to our renewal period, which will be in February for, for, for men's basketball in particular, and women's basketball, we'll have that, of course, all tied up so people can make the appropriate choices. We're going to challenge our fans, though, wherever we're playing, um, that we need them to come and support uh, our teams. Mark, I can't thank you enough for coming in and joining us. Fans, you're going to see Mark Harlan around at all the UCLA events. And uh, welcome to Westwood, and thanks for dropping in on Bruin Talk. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. We'll come back in a few moments after this brief public service announcement. We'll talk tennis. We'll be right back after this. A trophy can be made just about anywhere. But there's one place where champions are made. Hey. 
UCLA. Champions meet here. Welcome back to Bruin Talk. Before we meet our next guests, let's take a look at this week's Athlete of the Week. This week, we honor Eder Ariola of the men's soccer team as our Student Athlete of the Week. Eder scored both of UCLA's goals in the 2-1 double overtime victory versus Dartmouth in the third round of NC2A competition. His first goal was in the 26th minute, and he finished the game with just eight seconds remaining in the second overtime. The goal was set up by a long throw-in from Bruin Joe Sophia, which was headed up by a Dartmouth defender. Etter then kicked the ball in for the goal, saving the Bruins from their first shootout competition in 20 years. The Bruins now look to face top seed Louisville as they head to NC2A quarterfinals for the second consecutive year. Congratulations, Etter, and good luck to the rest of the team. If you would like additional information about UCLA athletics, please visit our website at www.uclabruins.com. Well, while the men's soccer team was running around the pitch at Drake Stadium, our next guests were hard at work next door in the LA Tennis Center. We're pleased to have a couple of representatives from the tennis team with us. Amit Imbar is a senior. He's a left-hander. We'll talk about that. And the coach who knows what it's like to be a champion as a player and as a coach, Billy Martin. Welcome both of you to Bruin Talk. Welcome. Thank you. Boy, we saw the lights of the LA Tennis Center burning brightly. Uh, it's a hard work right now in, in the interim season between the fall and the regular season. Absolutely. Uh, from a coaching standpoint, this is the time for me to, to whip the boys into shape. Uh, we probably do a lot more off-court uh, training, uh, running, weight room stuff. So uh, really try to lay the foundation for our season starting in January right now. I mean, we've had you on the show before. I knew you were from Israel. I didn't know you were a lefty, but there's something about left-handers. Uh, uh, Lefties always have big serves, a lot of spin, kick the ball hard. Tell us about your serve. Um, when I serve, the ball um, get a different spin and different movement, so it's kind of hard to the opponent to get used to it. So that's the main advantage for lefty guys who serves. Uh, biggest serve like the out wide on the ad court, um, that's my biggest weapon, I would say. Um, hey, it's a big, it's a big advantage being a lefty. Tell us your thoughts about being one of the seniors on the team. Uh, we all excited for this upcoming year. Um, I know um, Nick, Holden, and I are very excited about this year, and we want to finish in a high note. And um, expectations are high, and we are ready. What are the team dynamics like this year, from a coach's perspective and from an athlete's perspective? Well, you never know year to year what it's going to be like, but so far I think it's looking very good. Uh, you never know how the, the young freshmen are going to mix with the older seniors like Amit, but uh, we really do have a good mix, uh, young and old players to have three seniors uh, returning that will be sort of the, the real base of our team and have been through the NCAA championships uh, before lays a great foundation, although we have some great freshmen, Daniel Kozakowski uh, joining our team, Clay Thompson, both local LA guys, as well as a few um, returning players. So I think the dynamics look good, uh, the camaraderie, uh, but until we start matches in January, I, I can't tell you for sure. Once you get into the schedule, you have your first tournaments and then you go to the indoors up in Seattle. When do you begin to assess how this team might fare as you get toward tournament time? Well, I think it's an ongoing process. I mean, part of the, the fun of going to the National Indoor Championships, which is the top 16 teams, is seeing the other teams, uh, really seeing some of their new players, what their chemistry looks like, how their players Im improved since last year. So that's always as much fun for me going up there to watch the other teams that we'll be fighting for a national championship with as much as seeing how our guys are, are competing and playing and, and holding up against the top team. So, uh, that's what I look forward to, especially early in the season. Come, you know, end of February, March, I mean, I think our lineup's pretty well solidified. The guys have their sort of pecking order. We have our doubles teams hopefully sorted out. That's always a, a tough thing, really trying to see the chemistry and who's playing well together uh, from year to year. So uh, learning process every year, even for the coaches. Coach, you played at UCLA. Now you've coached here for 26 seasons. What keeps you coming back to UCLA? Well, I, I love UCLA, of course, you know, again, playing here. My sister went to school here, uh, but I love the competition. I, I think as a, as a player, I, I haven't lost that, that fun of, you know, having the game, j game day jitters, you know, the nervousness, uh, you know, not knowing the outcome is always tough. I mean, it's, 
it's almost like a little uh, a drug that competition stuff uh, you, you can't you can't get away from it if you love sports and I love competition plus I just I love working with the kids uh, you know these are sort of my second family the kids that come through here year after year so that part makes it really fun for me and being around the kids keeps you young yourself Amit, you grew up in Israel, played a little bit at Maryland, then you came out to California. What attracted you to UCLA? Um, went to Maryland my freshman year, then transferred here to UCLA, and now that I, that I look back, uh, probably the best decision I made, and um, so I'm so glad I ended up here in California, in LA, and being close to my family and with great guys here and coaches, I'm just happy. How do you like playing for the Bruins, and what's the difference playing here than all the other places you've played? Um, we have this great facility here. Um, playing in this stadium court is always something special, and when you're out there on the, on the court and you're wearing the blue and gold and you playing for your team, it's really something special, and every time I'm out there, I'm just trying to do my, my best and for the, for the best of the team. What's tougher? Serving in the Israeli army for three years or playing for Billy Martin? <laughs> Definitely playing for Billy Martin. <laughs> <laughs> much, much more pressure on it. Now, tell, tell us about the experience of having to be in the military at such a young age. Um, it's a great experience. Everyone in Israel going through it. Uh, it makes you more mature when you go out of it. Uh, it makes you ready for life. And I think it helped me a lot coming to college and dealing with pressure and leadership and being in a group and yeah it helped me a lot. Coach you've had great success recruiting internationally a lot of players from all over the world have come and excelled here at UCLA I know you've got some some irons in the fire for recruiting on the current uh, current stage. Yes I think we had a great uh, recruiting year uh, our top two recruits right here again from uh, Southern California Marcus uh, Garone from Camarillo and Dennis McCurchin from Reseda. Really glad to assign them in November. I think our most exciting news is our uh, recent um, sort of recruit that's going to be starting this January. Uh, just sort of made his decision uh, last week uh, between Florida, Texas, and UCLA. He's going to be a Bruin. We can announce it now publicly, but uh, he will be starting as a Frenchman. We already had many good Frenchmen through the years. Uh, we actually have Max, Maxime Tabatrong right now, a Frenchman on our team, but uh, Adrian Puget is his name. He'll be a great addition to our team. He'll step in for sure and play in our top six, I know, and, uh, and top three doubles. So uh, recruiting really looks good. Uh, just guarantees us that we'll be you know, a formidable uh, team in the years to come, especially with losing three great seniors. Amit, uh, Nick Meister, and Holden Seguso will be tough shoes to fill, but uh, I think we've got a, a good base coming in that'll help us. You had experience working with internationals when you were a player. I mean, you won Junior Wimbledon a couple of times. You played against people, but learning the cultural sensitivities of people from all over the world. Tell us about, in your own life, the ongoing process of learning how to deal with people from different countries. Well, I mean, luckily the love of tennis kind of keeps us all together, but uh, certainly, you know, I think I've gotten a little bit better, hopefully after about 25 years of doing this, but, uh, you know, tennis is such an international sport now. I mean, you go on the tour, which is the dream of so many of our players who go out and play pro tennis, they're going to deal with kids and players from all different countries. So this, I think, is a way to help them do it in our locker room, on our court, uh, start to you know have a learning process of different cultures as you mentioned but for me I think uh, every kid's different whether they come from a different you know country or whatever I have to get a feel for them and then try to get the buttons to push for each player that's it's never easy but uh, you know it takes a few months generally. Coach and Amit if you guys can name one thing that you've learned from tennis that helps you out in life what would it be? You go first. <laughs> <laughs> I would say um, dealing with pressure uh, when you're out there like so many key moments you have to be focused and and forget about the pressure and just do your thing do the best thing you can and uh, I would say that's the most important thing I got out of tennis and playing for UCLA I would probably say patience uh, you know especially from a coaching standpoint I mean at times you want to win you want your players to you know 
play at their highest ability and it doesn't always happen for whatever reason, uh, you know, but to have patience and hopefully again to, to peak at the very end of our season, our NCAA championship is our main goal each and every year. So, you know, if we can have a few stumbles through the year, but really peak and make sure the coach has a little patience, I think that's uh, maybe as important a lesson as I've learned. We'll ask you to look into the crystal ball. What do you think the prospects are for UCLA in this upcoming season? I think very good. I really do, uh, especially with the, us acquiring the, the new Frenchman that will be here in, in January will really help our depth. Uh, I think it's certainly a chance for an NCAA championship. Uh, there's a couple really good teams out there. Virginia, who we lost to in the quarterfinals last year, uh, you know, SC beat them in the semifinals the next round. Uh, but that's a strong, strong team. But I see us a, a definitely a top 10 and, and a good chance to get to a quarter semis, maybe even a finals in the NCAAs, and a little, little luck, maybe bring a, another championship home. Amit, what are your goals? Hopefully we'll be again like top five team and Pac-10 champions and maintaining a home win and, and um, yeah, like the national title, that's, that's our, our goal. I mean, as a senior on the team, leadership is always important, especially as we talked about the relationship between the underclassmen and the older guys. How do you, how do you show your leadership? I'm trying to be patient with the young guys. Uh, they have a lot of questions. Um, trying to explain them everything, give them all the opportunities they, they c I can. Um, it's pretty hard coming to UCLA as a freshman. You're mostly like overwhelmed with everything in school. So I'm trying to help them balance school and tennis and uh, show them like how to like do quality work while you're on the court and fitness is important as well. So just being kind of like the father of them, like if they need help or anything. Now lefties always seem to have more kick on their serve. Is that just because we're not used to seeing that reverse spin? I think it is. I mean, it's probably just as much action with the righty than the lefty, but you know, it just seems weird because it's, it's going the opposite direction. Well, we wish you both the best of luck for the upcoming season. Always great to have you here on Bruin Talk. Uh, tell us about how the fans can see the Bruins this year out of the LA Tennis Center. Well, we've got over 6,000 seats, so we never are uh, you know, gonna be short of seats, but uh, free admission. Uh, we want everybody to be able to come out. Uh, we'll have a couple great matches, Stanford and uh, USC as always. Get the band out, that always juices it up. Uh, get some free pizzas and drinks for the students, but uh, love them to be out there. We normally start right around 1.30 to 2 o'clock each match day, so uh, love to see the fans out there rooting on the Bruins. Well, we hope to see you out there as the UCLA team takes on the Pac-10's best. Amit, Coach Billy Martin, thanks for joining us, and thank you for joining us on another edition of UCLA Bruin Talk. Naomi and I will be back next time with another entertaining show. Until then, so long from Westwood. We'll see you next time.